Good evening. Hello, everybody. My name is Nicholas Davies. I am the artistic director of the Rossini Club, and tonight we'll be performing live from the Dreamland Theater, our program, uh, which is featuring late romantic composers, so Mendelssohn, Schumann, but also um, sort of their 20th century and 21st century counterparts, so Jörg Wiedmann, uh, Chang, uh, and Isang Yun. Uh, but um, I think I mentioned this, my colleagues Ivy Ringel on the soon, um, and Wesley Dakota will be joining me here. Um, it's a pleasure to play for all of you in the audience tonight and all of you who are watching from home. So uh, first, our, our first selections for this evening will be uh, Schumann's Adagio in Allegro, which is uh, a delightful and characteristic work by, by the composer. It's one of his few instrumental uh, sonata-type works, originally for horn, and I thought I'd steal it.
So the next piece you're about to hear is by composer Yui Chang, uh, who I met a few summers ago at the Composers Conference at Brandeis. And I find that our music, much like the Romantics, has, displays a precise understanding and inventiveness in harmony, as well as a clarity of character. And this piece that you're about to hear, Tangled in Smoke, I think really captures the idea of this concert at the edge of waking. And it comes off as a sort of dreamy haze of a tango that explodes in sudden bursts of passion. Our next piece today is by Korean composer Lee Sang Yoon. Lee Sang Yoon started his life in Korea, but he spent pretty much all of his career in West Berlin, Germany. He is known for combining Korean folk music with um, the German Romantic tradition. Yoon's monologue was originally written in 1983 for two versions, one for bass clarinet and one for bassoon. Monologue uses a bunch of different expressive elements, ornaments, glissandi, trills, portamentos, all sorts of different sounds that are all drawn from Korean folk music. Monologue ranges from contemplative to violent to turbulent to very song-like and lush and rich. I hope you all enjoy Lee Song Yoon's monologue.
So our next piece in the program <laughs> is uh, Wiedmann's Five Fragments for Clarinet and Piano. So Jörg Wiedmann um, is an Austrian composer, um, I think in his uh, 40s at this point, and clarinetist and conductor. And he uh, is quite, quite incredible for the fact that he does all of those things extremely, extremely well. Um, the th when I was thinking about programming music for this recital, and you know, I was thinking about um, doing something that was more in the direction of romantic composers, sort of this hyper-emotional uh, music, the thing that first came to mind was the music of Jörg Wiedmann, because you see, his music, uh, for the most part, uh, takes almost all these, uh, the, the, almost like the, the, the feelings, the zeitgeist, the sort of um, emotional uh, ethos of what exists in, in, uh, in romantic music, and he kind of condenses and, uh, and sort of puts it into this almost like, a, especially in this piece, uh, almost like just a pure ball of, of energy, of, of uh, sort of concise, uh, uh, aphoristic music. Um, in some of his longer works, clarinet quintet, his octet um, in homage to Schubert, um, the references are much more literal than sort of the, the extreme contrast and the sort of uh, hidden, as, as, as uh, Wesley and I kind of like to refer to this, the hidden jazz <laughs> in this piece, which when you hear it, maybe you'll get it, maybe you won't. Um, but, uh, you know, a lot of his actual uh, sort of more mature works as of late have actually contained real references to this music, sort of um, as though we're in a kind of nightmare or dream or a separate reality, a world where sort of maybe perhaps music from uh, 1850 stopped right there and cut out the last 150, 170 years and just went on right composing. Um, but for the meantime, five fragments.
going to take a 10 minute pause. Thank you, everybody, again, for uh, being here tonight. Uh, our last piece on the program is going to be Mendelssohn's uh, first trio in D minor, which I'll let Wesley talk about a little bit more. But uh, before, we, before we go on, um, I just want to say thank you again to the Dreamland for, for making this happen. Thank you to the lovely crew who has been recording us and making it possible for you to see in the comfort of your homes. I know it's, it's, it's a shame that we have to be 
still, you know, <laughs> watching everything from home, but, you know, we're just lucky to be able to do it. What can I say? And it's, it's a pleasure to be able to play for a receptive and small but wonderful audience. Um, so thank you, and uh, thank you to Ivy and Wesley for, for, for doing this with me. Ivy, I should say, is uh, a co-director with me, um, and we've been working on an exciting season for next year. Um, where we're commissioning a new piece for clarinet quintet, uh, which is to say string quartet, and, string quartet and clarinet by Derek David, uh, alongside uh, Morton Feldman's uh, clarinet quintet of the same instrumentation. Um, we're very excited to be doing that. We're also hoping to be bringing out uh, Wesley again, who is a long time um, collaborator. You, uh, I was going to say something more, you know, fighting in terms of the fact <laughs> that you have to put up with us. But, uh, <laughs> couldn't come to me right now. But anyway, but he's been the, the most wonderful, flexible, and uh, art, great artistic voice that we've had here. Um, so we're lucky to have him. Um, alongside, again, Wesley again, and uh, Ivy and I, um, in a uh, quintet featuring piano and winds, uh, Mozart, another piece by Wiedmann, um, and the Poulenc Trio. Uh, so uh, I'll let Wesley talk. Thank you, Nick. Uh, <laughs> Mendelssohn wrote two piano trios that we still play uh, quite often today. And although I'm biased as a pianist, I think they're among the greatest chamber works ever written. And I remember being struck with them and their brilliance the first time I heard them in college. But I couldn't quite figure out, I couldn't explain to you then what was so great about them. Luckily, Schumann, who reviewed the piece you're about to hear, provided a wonderful quote. He said that Mendelssohn most clearly understood the paradoxes of the age and was the first to reconcile them in his music. And in this piece, I see part of that in the incredible effusion of passion that we associate with the romantics but also the balance and clarity that we associate with the classical era. But even more so, what I find so fascinating is the way Mendelssohn can walk this fine line between such disparate emotions. You'll find moments of lamenting despair give way to incredibly warm elation and moments of impetuous and searing fury give way to laughter. <laughs> so I hope you all find this piece as charming and endearing as I did when I first heard it.